Well, what's called by some the best attended show in all of D.C. takes place uh, next week, and we're getting a preview this week. More than 42 manufacturers have more than 700 new vehicles on display at the Washington Auto Show at the Walker E. Washington Convention Center. The show is known to uh, uh, showcase more green cars than any other major U.S. auto show. This year, it's going even further with what it calls an advanced technology superhighway. That will showcase advances in electric, natural gas, diesel, biofuels, hydrogen, and other vehicles. The superhighway is also meant to offer a, a central meeting place for consumers, industry, and policymakers. Innovation is front and center. Among the companies that will be there, Audi, BMW, Kia will be there, of course, all of the big three. Many, many others, including Novozymes of Denmark. And joining us now is Adam Monroe. He is pre president of Novozymes North America. Adam, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. It's good me. to see you. You guys are actually based in Raleigh, North Carolina. Our, our North American headquarters are in okay. Raleigh, that's right. So tell us about, you're actually having an event at the show today, turning today's trash into tomorrow's fuel. What is, what is going to be your message there, and what did you bring me over that's, here? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, this is actually government waste from, uh, government waste. from uh, NSA. And what we do is we, uh, we are a biotechnology company, and it's our enzymes that actually convert this into a sugar that allows these guys to, to uh, turn it into a biofuel or an advanced biofuel. And what a lot of people don't recognize is that this technology is here today. We'll actually be driving around on it at the show uh, this this morning. And that's the first. This is this is the first of its kind. This is the first flex fuel vehicle running on on municipal and agricultural waste. This is, yes, and in this in this case, it's municipal waste from the government. And what is that? Is it paper? It is paper. It's primarily, if I understand it right, cardboard and paper it's all waste. Cardboard. Yes, okay. it is. And so, how mu how much potential is there for this kind of waste to be used for biofuels? Uh, I, I believe they are estimating they could produce up to 9 billion gallons of, of biofuel from this uh, source, from municipal waste. Now, you waste. guys are involved in all kinds of, of different kinds of biofuels, but you're specializing right now in this kind of municipal waste is your focus? Uh, our focus is actually providing the enzymes and the biotechnology to convert a number of feedstocks to uh, biofuels, including municipal waste, but it can be uh, energy crops like switchgrass and uh, uh, corn cobs and these kind of things, agricultural waste as well as uh, traditional energy uh, And the key crops. here is, the, is those enzymes that, that make the transition that for is, you. And that's, that's where you, you partner up with that, with that fiber right This is, uh, yes, this, the fuel is actually made by fiber right, a partner of ours. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a facility in Iowa, I believe, where they uh, actually made the fuel we're driving on today. So how big a splash do you think uh, you'll be making at the auto show this week? You know, it's quite a, it's quite a tall order to compete against electric these days. That, that, that is true, but we think um, that, that there's going to be a, a lot of solutions for the auto industry. And, you know, the combustion engine is going to be with us for a while, uh, particularly as the, uh, the rest of the world's economy grows. And so it needs clean fuel. Uh, for these engines, mm -hmm. as well as uh, having other technologies to provide transportation. And what else is needed here in Washington? The show is also a big, a big uh, has a big emphasis on public policy. Sure what what is does. your industry looking for for government? Yeah, we need uh, we need to ensure that the re the legislation that's there today is upheld in the renewable fuel standard to make sure that we don't provide confusion for the potential investors that want to invest there. We also need to make sure that the uh, market is demand is there via having as many flex fuel vehicles out in the country as we can. And infrastructure, right? For and obviously infrastructure, that's right. Now, are you happy with the moves you've seen so far? Uh, Secretary Vilsack has done a lot of work to try to make deals to support this industry. That's right. Uh, we are happy with the moves that they're making, but I think uh, what's important to note is that this technology is ready today. So if we actually have the flex fuel vehicles and the pumps to deliver this fuel, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, an impact we can have, a positive impact we can have on the environment now. Now, a lot of the worries about biofuels uh, and alternative fuels is that they actually um, produce, they, 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 uh, they use more energy than they actually produce, that the numbers actually don't add up. Is, mm -hmm. that, is, that, is that gap starting to close? Uh, actually, we, we don't find that that's the case. In <laughs> fact, uh, biofuels, even at the, uh, the base level, produce roughly 30% more energy than it takes to Taking to into account in. uh, the energy needed to grow them, convert them into biofuels? Everything included. In fact, the entire life cycle assessment of these kind of things is one area that we have a lot of expertise and we, we garner a lot of world attention for that expertise. And, and we have no doubt that you get a lot more energy out than you put in. Is it a real uphill battle to deal with the automakers? What do you need from them to try to get their support in, in things like increasing the blend rate? Uh, actually, I think the automo automotive makers have been uh, quite supportive. And I think uh, 
what they need is just some, some legislation that would mandate, for instance, like other countries have done, to have flex fuel vehicles as a standard. It doesn't cost a lot to mm -hmm. change a car to a flex fuel vehicle. So is this the vehicle here that we're seeing? Uh, this is the, what, the, that, that is uh, <laughs> one of the two vehicles that we will have on display. That's okay. right. All yeah. right. Well, we will catch up with you there as well. Adam Monroe from Novazoms, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Me. Good luck with your event today at the show. Thanks.